For the second year in a row on our farm, we've run a determinator plot where we compare row units from Case IH, John Deere, Kinsey, and White. Now, last year, there was quite a bit of gap from top to bottom, and quite frankly, a lot of that, I think, had to do with the fact that we ended up going corn on corn and weren't really planning on it, so we hadn't done any fall tillage. And doing spring tillage only in continuous corn leaves a lot of residue out there, so it's a lot harder to get a good stand. This year, we saw there wasn't a tremendous amount of difference. The Case IH in both years finished number one. John Deere in both years finished number two. But this year, that gap was just a lot closer, and I think it's because we prepared the soil a lot better this year. Well, I think it's realistic because, you know, sometimes the field just isn't perfect when you're going out there to plant, and you plant into some conditions that aren't ideal. I'm really curious to see how that works. You know, if you've got ideal conditions, you're running the planter slow, you've got a medium seed size, everything is perfect, you know what? You can get just about any planter set up to do a pretty decent job in the field. I'm curious about what happens when your speed goes up a little bit. Like this year, for example, when you've got a brother like Brian that says, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, and it rains every day in the spring. You're thinking, man, how are we gonna get this done? And there's that temptation to speed up the planter. Now, the other thing that we've run into the last few years is seed size issues. When there's high demand on corn seed, like there will be in 2009, there's gonna be a lot of corn acres out there and there may not be enough seed corn to go around. So we're gonna plant all those unusual seed sizes. How is your planter gonna to respond to that? Is it able to plant small seed? Is it able to plant those big, big plateless seeds? That's really the question we had for our farm. Yeah, and the other thing, when we come back to this whole speed issue, uh, let's address that first. Over <laughs> Getting defensive, yeah. Brian? No, I'm not, <laughs> but uh, I'll just say this is something that we, we started testing quite a few years ago because Darren mentioned Francis Childs <laughs> earlier, and you know he was planning at two miles an hour. So we did our two mile an hour test, and we really didn't see much difference between two miles an hour and five miles an hour. But like this year, we do see a difference from five miles an hour to six and six to seven, and it just seems like you end up with a drop you don't end up with quite as good a stand out there, quite as consistent as even a stand as what you would like when you speed that planter up. And it really didn't make a lot of difference whose planter it was. Now, the case they say that theirs is, you know, can do all speeds, you know, it, it probably can, but I'm still well, it's a, a lot little more, bit better. It's a little yep, bit better than the other ones from what we've seen. I'm still a lot seen. more comfortable if we can plant at five miles an hour, maybe even four. So on our farm, we have been running a 16 row planter. We're switching to a 24 row planter. After the trials we've done the last couple of years, we're going to that 24 row planter so we can get more done in less time. We don't have to run super fast. There we you go. don't have to listen there to your brother go. complaining about how fast <laughs> a planter may hey, be running out in the it? field. So, so anyway, I guess we just wanted you to know that we did do another study in our farm this year. If you'd like to see any of those results, you can certainly come to, uh, to any of the, the local meetings we do. And at some point here this fall, I'm sure we'll put that on our website as well. well. You do need to focus on your planter to get maximum yields on your farm. And you also need to focus on killing our weed of the week. We'll show you how coming up next.